Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. So, want to go ahead and get to some late-breaking news, uh, and it does involve the University of Arkansas and its new head coach. John Calipari. So it's been an interesting, what, three weeks now, two weeks now, whatever it's been since John Calipari got the job at Arkansas. But he gets the job, what, a Sunday night? It doesn't, it's not technically official, but we know it's coming. That Westmore tweet kind of breaks the internet there on Sunday night at the Final Four. Then about a week after that, John Calipari gets his first commitment at Arkansas when Big Z, Zvonaviri Visich follows him from Kentucky. Well, after that, you just kind of assume there's just going to be a slew of news and information. Everything's going to happen. And then it goes quiet. Uh, I was like the meme from uh, from Titanic. It's been 84 years, or at least that's how it felt for Arkansas fans who are waiting for news, waiting for something tangible. Well, just moments ago, we got it because another member of John Calipari's first Arkansas Razorbacks roster is official as five star. McDonald's All-American Carter Knox. Oh, he has committed to the University of Arkansas. That's right, baby. Can anybody stop the big pig invasion? Carter Knox headed to Arkansas. This is big. This is huge. And let's go ahead and break it down. So first of all, it's big. It's huge. It's ultimately not surprising at all, okay? You can go back to the Monday of the national championship game when John Calipari got the job. I put it out there then. I said, I, I think of all six Kentucky signees, I think it is most likely, almost certain, that Carter Knox is the one that is most likely to follow him. Um, I think I said at the time, like, uh, just go ahead and print up the graphics right now. But that was exactly how I felt in the moment. And it just made sense on so many levels, okay? First of all, I think Arkansas fans all know this, but this was a kid, his final recruitment, his final commitment. Remember, by the way, he just committed to Kentucky about, uh, it was the last weekend of the college basketball regular season. So late February, early March. It's not like he committed a year ago and now he's got to scramble and whatever. He was comfortable with John Calipari. He was comfortable with what John Calipari was selling just a few weeks ago. But when you looked at his final four from just a few weeks ago, following Calipari to Arkansas always made the most sense. Final four at the time was Kentucky. It was Louisville. It was South Florida where he is from originally. He's from the Tampa area. And also on top of that, it was the possibility of returning to overtime elite. Well, returning to overtime elite doesn't really make sense. South Florida, a great story. Would be cool to stay home, all that. But when you have the opportunity to play in the SEC, you don't turn it down. And obviously Louisville was not going to be a factor because Kenny Payne, the head coach, has been fired since uh, Carter Knox made his commitment. And oh, by the way, it is worth noting. He of course was hired as John Calipari's lead assistant. And so when you go through the history of the kid, of his family, his brother played for Calipari. He was committed to Calipari. By the way, you follow the tea leaves. I think he was as close with Kenny Payne as anybody, but of course, Kenny Payne is no longer the head coach at Louisville. The two closest people that he has been with in the recruiting process are both now at Arkansas. This made sense. He took the official visit Monday. You saw him post it on Instagram. Now it is official. He is a Razorback. In terms of what Arkansas fans are going to get, listen, I really like the kid. Six foot six, super athletic. Okay. It's interesting because his brother, Kevin Knox, as I said, played at Kentucky for Calipari. But Kevin Knox was more of a, a um, you know, a skill guy. He, he wasn't super duper athletic. He wasn't jumping out of the gym, but had a nice mid range game, deep threes, all that. Carter Knox is skilled, but he's also a better athlete than his brother. It's great news. By the way, he's got great pedigree. His father played for Bobby Bowden at Florida state in football. His brother plays in the NBA right now, but Carter Knox, six foot six, he's super athletic. He plays hard. Listen, he's not a finished product. Most certainly, if not any, College, uh, high school basketball players are not, but it doesn't change the fact that I expect him to come to Arkansas next year and have an absolute immediate impact. The bottom line is, no matter what that other fan base is going to tell you, Calipari, you could criticize him for a lot, but one thing he seems to do better than anybody, 
He gets these young, talented high school players with upside, and he gets them to develop, and he gets them playing their best by the end of the year. Regardless of how things ended last year at Kentucky, make no mistake, Rob Dillingham is going to be a top five pick. He owes that to John Calipari because nobody was talking about him like that in any way, shape, or form prior to getting to Kentucky. Um, Reed Shepard, four-star, was a McDonald's All-American, but nobody was talking about him as a potential top five, top ten pick before he got to Kentucky. Antonio Reeves got better. And so, no, not everybody, you know, nobody bats a thousand in evaluation and development. But I think new slate for, or, or new start, fresh slate for John Calipari. He's kind of building this roster slowly with guys that he's comfortable with. I think Carter Knox is going to be a guy that has success and is put in position to succeed um, at Arkansas. Now, the tricky part, of course, is try to figure out who the heck he's going to play with. Because as of right now, he is hog number two, okay? Last time I checked, it's been a while since I looked at the official rule books of college basketball think you need five uh, to play at any given time. And you really probably want, what, 11, 12 players on the roster before the season's, uh, before the season starts. So there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of talk. And, and, and it's hard to kind of speculate fact from fiction and figure out everything that is going to happen uh, and what the roster is going to look like around Carter Knox. It would be great if I, I'd love to break down his game more but you just don't know what the roster is going to look like around him, okay? And so in terms of possibilities, let's go ahead and talk about some of the guys that are certainly on John Calipari's big board as we know it right now. By the way, this is always subject to change, so forgive me if by the time you see this, uh, if something has changed. But first off, from the high school ranks, I still think Arkansas is in very good shape with a lot of the players that were committed to John Calipari at Kentucky. Obviously, uh, Travis Perry is not following him. I've been told, and this is not a knock on the kid. One, he's from Kentucky. For people who don't know, four-star from Kentucky was the Kentucky State Player of the Year. I don't know that Calipari really ever really, really, really wanted him, um, but kind of felt obligated to offer him. The kid commits whatever, so he's staying at Kentucky. And that's not a knock on him. That's not a whatever. I'm just here to say he's not following him. Everybody else, though, as we record right now, is still very much up in the air. Jaden Quaintance. The number one center in America, high school basketball, six foot nine, six foot ten. I really like his game. As we have talked about quite a bit on this show, uh, he is a player who he's especially intriguing, not just because of his upside. He is going to be a two year college basketball player. He is a guy that is only 16 years old right now, but will play college basketball next year, will enter college basketball as the youngest player in college basketball barring something shocking. And the way the NBA draft rules are set up is that basically, you, not basically, you have to be one year removed from high school basketball and you have to turn 19 years old in the year of the NBA draft for you to be eligible. Well, he's 16 years old right now, turns 17 in, later this year, 18 in 2025 meaning he is not eligible for the NBA draft till he's 2026 20, when he's 19 years old. So you get a commitment from that kid. You're getting two years from him. I really like the talent. Not perfect, a little bit raw, but guess what? You get two years to work with him, two years to develop him. Kenny Payne is one of the best big man whisperers in all of college basketball. Um, and we'll see what happens with him. Obviously, he took a visit to Louisville last week. Um, on top of that, it is worth noting uh, he mentioned to Adam Zagoria, New York based writer, really good guy, good friend. And I wouldn't say a good friend of mine, but I know Adam pretty well. Um, told Adam Zagoria on Sunday that he plans to also potentially visit Memphis and that there is a visit to Arkansas on the table. And so, bottom line, I think Arkansas is going to be in the mix. Call me crazy. I think right now they should still be considered the leader going forward. Billy Richmond, Memphis kid originally went to Camden High School in New Jersey, but to me, I still think Arkansas is in very good shape. Remember, his dad played for John Calipari at Memphis. The relationship is still there. It's a very interesting story, actually. I believe John Calipari threw the dad off the team. And the dad, in hindsight, kind of sat back and said, you know what? I respect John Calipari. That was the, the lesson that I needed. Um, and so he reveres John Calipari. And so my guess is, that uh, Billy Richmond will eventually follow 
will eventually follow uh, 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 Car- Carter Knox and obviously, of course, John Calipari as well to Arkansas. Also worth mentioning, family in Memphis, not too far from Fayetteville, kind of just makes sense. Boogie Flan to me will be the very interesting one. So Boogie Flan, five-star guard from New York City. We've talked about him quite a bit. Um, he was a player who committed to Kentucky. But why it's interesting, Orlando Antigua was his lead recruiter. Orlando Antigua, a New York-based recruiting kind of guru, great assistant coach too. I don't ever want to sell undersell these guys as just recruiters because they're not. Orlando Antigua is respected, revered in the basketball community. And so I just bring it up. Because Orlando Antigua on Sunday made the decision to not follow John Calipari to Arkansas, to not stay at Kentucky. He's actually going back to Illinois, where he was an assistant coach prior to coming to Kentucky over the last three seasons. And so I just bring it up because is Boogie Fland a factor at Illinois? I think if you're an Arkansas fan, the good news is it does not really feel like Boogie Fland is either being pursued or vice versa by Kentucky, at least not as of right now. And so that still feels like a kid got the relationship with Calipari. Obviously, there are guys from Calipari's Kentucky staff that are coming with him. I could be wrong. I think it will be tough to sell a, a New York City kid. I'm potentially going to Illinois if he's never been there. So we'll see what happens with him. Santo Cyril, by the way, also an overtime elite kid. So I just took a visit to Georgia this past week. So we'll see what happens there. Um, from the uh, from the transfer ranks, a couple interesting names. Jonas Adu, seven foot center, back to the basket guy, played the last couple of years at Tennessee. He is very interesting because unlike Big Z, he is not a stretch guy. He's not a guy that's going to play 15, 20 feet from the basket. He wants to play down low. He's comfortable around the rim. Really, really, really good. And oh, by the way, Arkansas did make his final four. Baylor is the perceived favorite right now. I would still assume Baylor is going to be that team. And then also has Alabama and North Carolina in that final four as well. Carolina kind of needs a big man and he's from Carolina. So that could be a dark horse candidate. But again, I think Baylor is the front runner. I'll tell you this, there's starting to be a little bit of Janelle Davis buzz. Janelle Davis, of course, uh, uh, from Florida Atlantic was a key part of that final four run just a few years ago. I would argue He is, in my opinion, the best player in the portal right now. Now, everybody's after him. I know Kentucky is very hard after him under new head coach Mark Pope. Obviously, there was buzz this weekend. I still have yet to be able to confirm that he was not allowed, uh, was not admitted to the University of Michigan. Michigan's taken a bunch of transfers over the last couple days, so I don't know exactly what is going on there, but we will see what happens with John L. Davis. But man, oh man, he is an elite talent. And listen, it's kind of interesting because he's kind of a one and done in his own right, right? He needs to go to a place that's going to feature him, that's going to put him in position to succeed and get him to the NBA. Who's better than John Calipari? So those are a couple names. We'll keep an eye on all of them. We'll react to all of them when they happen in real time. But Carter Knox, five-star, McDonald's All-American, is officially headed to the University of Arkansas. If you enjoyed that video, do me a quick favor. Make sure to subscribe to the Aaron Torres Pod YouTube channel. New clips, new videos going up every single day. Click subscribe, put on notifications, do your boy Taurus. Asa.